Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ and today we're going to continue looking at the new M1 Mac Mini and its performance in a content creation workflow. Today we're going to be specifically looking at how it performs in a couple of real world projects in After Effects. If you haven't seen the first few videos in the series, I created a playlist and you can find a link in the description. Feel free to check them out at your convenience, but right now let's jump into After Effects. I'm using the latest version of After Effects, version 17.6. However, unlike Premiere Pro, there isn't an M1 optimized version of After Effects yet. Adobe hasn't mentioned when there will be, so this is the Intel-based Mac version. However, it seemed to translate in with Rosetta 2 just fine on the first launch. Now, I'm gonna be working with two different After Effects compositions. However, they're not my projects, meaning I didn't create the composition from scratch. I got these from Envato Elements, it's not a sponsor, just a site I use to get good quality stock images and video footage, audio tracks, and in this case, a new shorter and cleaner logo reveal intro for my videos. To be honest, since switching to DaVinci Resolve for my editing software, I haven't used After Effects as much as I used to, as I can do most of the basic stuff I would have normally done, like simple motion graphics or basic 3D infographics in Fusion. However, for the rare occasion where I need a little more complexity, I still go with AE. The first composition has a moderate level of complexity for a logo reveal. It's a six second 4K clip in total, and the main composition consists of about 60 layers within 60 subcomps. There are five pre-rendered video files and 12 solid materials for compositing, masking, and overlays using several different modes and track mats. I was able to import my logo easily, position it and size it, and I was also able to easily not only edit the main output controls, but also tweak things inside individual layers such as stroke and shadow thickness, layer styles and animation keyframes to give the logo more of a 3D look without having to go with any extrusions. Now, viewport performance was okay and was fine at half resolution while working in subcomps. However, even at quarter resolution was a bit sluggish on the main composition. RAM preview did work and rendered in the timeline at just under five frames per second. Using the Mercury GPU accelerated renderer, the project rendered in nine minutes and 37 seconds. The second project is actually the current logo reveal intro you saw at the start of the video. I've been needing to fix a few things about it, so now's my chance. This is a significantly more complex composition. It's a 15 second HD clip consisting of over 170 layers and 40 subcomps. There are 12 pre-rendered media files and almost 30 solid materials used. It's basically taking everything from the previous project and adding multiple instances of extrusions and then keyframe animating the 3D extrusions on multiple axes. Again, working in the viewport at half resolution was okay working in the less complex subcomps, but not really doable on the main composition. However, because it's an HD project, quarter resolution wasn't really an option as quality was just too low to see the details I was trying to fix. I settled on switching between a half and a third to work through the project. Again, I rendered the composition using hardware acceleration, and this one took one hour and 32 minutes to complete. Now, just like with DaVinci Resolve in my last video, using the same external drive, I opened the project up in After Effects on the same $700 PC. Specs are in the description below if you missed the last two videos. And without making any changes to the comp, I added it to the render queue. I set the output to lossless AVI and hit render. Now, once the render started, I noticed two things. First, there was already a render queued up from when I saved the project on the Mac as a lossless movie file. So, 
Okay, I let that render. And the second thing I noticed was my GPU wasn't working at all, meaning I still had the render mode set to Mercury software render only, but this comp actually has very few elements where hardware acceleration would even matter. So I let it go expecting the render to take longer than it did on the Mac, but they didn't. The movie file did it in nine minutes, even in the AVI file in eight minutes and 56 seconds. So now I changed the render mode to CUDA acceleration and it took eight minutes and 28 seconds. Next, I opened the second composition and it rendered in one hour and three minutes. Like 30 minutes faster than on the Mac, which shouldn't happen. After Effects is pretty much optimized for an eight core CPU and in a linear render, we'll use every thread it has available. As you see here, it's using all eight of the Intel threads pretty evenly. I've seen the benchmarks. The M1 crushes four core CPUs and Cinebench R23 and Geekbench, so it should do much better rendering the 3D extrusion layers. So that's the what. The four core i3 10100 PC outperforms the Mac Mini in After Effects. Of course, I'm never just happy with the what. I need to know the how and the why. So of course, I jump back on the Mac to take a closer look and what I noticed is that while rendering the CPU was only being utilized at 30 to 40 percent and only four of the cores were actually being used. Now I don't know if these are the big firestorm cores or the little ice storm cores. I assume the big cores but in any case the CPU isn't being fully utilized. So there's the how the PC outperformed the Mac or at least one part of it. As to the why, I assume and I hope it's just because After Effects hasn't been optimized for the M1 yet, and I hope that when it is, we'll definitely see a significant performance increase with the full potential of the M1 being used. Now, this isn't the whole picture. I also noticed the CPU utilization was swinging back and forth a lot, and you can see that using hardware acceleration, every time the GPU would spike, the CPU would dip. I'm pretty sure this has to do with the eight gigabytes of shared memory on the M1. Both the CPU cores and the GPU cores need that memory. It's limited, so basically they need to trade on and off for it. So with this in mind, I switched to software rendering only and tried again, and this time the CPU was utilized more consistently at about 50%, I mean, not great, but better, and the render completed in 58 minutes much better and faster than the PC. So that brings me to the hardest part of this gig. Would I recommend the base model M1 Mac Mini for a serious After Effects user? Well, this one's kind of a no brainer. No, I wouldn't. Even if and when Adobe optimizes AE for the M1, it still won't be a good choice because it'll still be seriously bottlenecked by lack of memory. Along with AE using all the CPU cores it has available, well, up to eight, it also uses all the system memory available. It used all 16 gigabytes of memory on this PC. When I output the final versions of these projects on my production workstation, it used all 64 gigabytes of memory there. And on the Mac, it was using 10 to 11 gigs, meaning it was making heavy use of the SSD swap file. So, if you use After Effects as a regular part of your workflow, neither of these systems is a good choice. Serious After Effects users probably know this, but if you might be thinking about getting into After Effects, my system recommendation is the fastest eight core CPU you can afford. AE performance scaling seriously drops off after eight cores. A minimum of 32 gigabytes of RAM, especially now as you can find 32 gig kits for pretty cheap, and the best NVIDIA graphics card you can afford. I'm not trying to be an NVIDIA shill, but CUDA acceleration is a thing, and if you want to use the ray tracing rendering features in After Effects, then get an RTX card. I know that sounds like a serious system, but After Effects is a serious program. Now, if you just casually use After Effects, very simple video composition, some light motion graphics, or a few special effects, then yeah, the Mac Mini can do it, and hopefully it will be able to do it better soon with an update. But, I mean, that's the cost of being a tech enthusiast and adopting bleeding edge tech. It 
doesn't always work like we think it should for everything. I was hugely impressed with this tiny little silver box's ability to output high bitrate ProRes video in DaVinci Resolve, but not so impressed with what I thought should be better performance in After Effects. But like I said, hopefully there'll be an M1 optimized After Effects beta soon. When there is, I'll follow up and see how it's improved. Until then, I need some help from you guys. I need to pick one of these logo reveals to use as the intro for my videos and I want y'all to help me pick it. So, should it be the clean reveal? Or the 3D reveal? Let me know which one you guys like better in the comments below and I'll pick the one with the most votes. Also, don't forget to like the video on your way to check out the rest of my M1 videos in the series. I'll be back soon with some more content creation workflows on the Mac Mini, but first I have some stuff that vendors sent me to check out that I need to get to, so be sure to get subscribed so you don't miss that stuff. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.